Welcome back to the second part of the lecture. Uh, today, we're going to learn how to use Amazon Web Service uh, for our HLS and FPGA experiment. Before I begin, uh, I'd like to mention that many of the figures and contents in this part of the lecture are from documents provided by AWS and Xilinx. Uh, today's learning objective is to be able to explain the architecture of AWS F1 instance and also be able to create and log into an AWS instance. Amazon Web Service is the uh, on-demand cloud computing service provided by, by Amazon. And uh, in AWS, you are not paying a flat monthly fee uh, their fee is charged after you use their service and it is based on how long and how many platforms uh, you have used. Um, AWS can be used for machine learning, high performance computing, application service, uh, application development, uh, or many other things. For our class, uh, we're going to use FPGA on their Elastic Compute Cloud. And um, I don't have the latest numbers, but as of 2019, uh, AWS is the leading cloud service provider with 45% uh, of their worldwide uh, market share. Amazon EC2 offers many different types of computers. Some are general purpose, uh, some are compute optimized, storage optimized, and memory optimized. The capital letters MCI uh, reflects the type of instances and the number uh, shows the uh, generation. There are some instances types that have uh, special hardware. Uh, some have GPUs and uh, some have FPGAs. The one we're going to use in this class is called F1, uh, the one that has an FPGA. The F1 instance has a Xilinx UltraScale uh, VU9P. Uh, depending on the number of FPGAs it has, uh, the naming is a little bit different. Uh, the one we're going to use in this class is uh, F1 2X Large, uh, which has one FPGA board. Let's see how the FPGA acceleration is being done on the AWS F1. Amazon Machine Image, or AMI, is a template of a virtual machine that includes the OS and all the software that is needed to generate and run an FPGAB string. Uh, we'll use the latest AMI provided by Xilinx, and this is loaded onto the uh, EC2 F1 instance. Uh, the FPGAB stream on the F1 instance is called Amazon FPGA Image, or AFI. The AFI is loaded onto an ultra scale uh, FPGA that is connected to a server through PCIe. Uh, it's quite similar to the GPU you plug into your motherboard. Uh, the accelerator on FPGA will communicate with CPU through uh, PCIe. The CPU acts as a host, so you can think of it as a software controller. Also note that the uh, FPGA has its own DDR. Uh, this DDR is different from host DDR. Um, so there's when there's lots of data, uh, you need to copy the data from the host DDR to the FPGA device DDR through the PCIe. Here's the development flow on AWS F1. First, you launch the FPGA developer AMI, uh, which includes the programming environment and the hardware development kit, or HDK. Uh, then you would uh, develop an FPGA custom logic. Uh, in this class, we're going to use the C-based uh, high-level synthesis to make a custom logic, uh, but you can also choose to use Verilog or OpenCL-based HLS. Uh, you should also make a host program uh, that controls the custom logic. Uh, based on these um, source codes, uh, Xilinx Vitus will make a hardware bitstream or AFI uh, for you. Uh, then you can run your AFI on an F1 instance or put it on AWS Marketplace uh, for others to use. 
Now, uh, here's one clarification I want to make. Uh, you only need to run your AFI on an F1 instance, but you don't need to make an AFI on an F1 instance. Uh, you can actually make an AFI on any instance uh, using the FPGA developer AMI. Um, the reason we do this is due to the cost of AWS F1. Uh, let's see this on the next slide. As of uh, summer 2021, F1.2x large on North Virginia uh, costs $1.65 per hour, but uh, M5.2x large, uh, which has a similar compute capability, uh, only costs $0.384 per hour. Since AFI creation typically, typically takes many hours, you may want to spend most of your time using a cheaper server uh, M5.2x large and run an F1 instance only one when needed. Uh, but this really depends on how tight your budget is. Also, uh, please be careful about your storage cost. Uh, even if you do not do anything uh, with your node, each gigabyte costs about 10 cents uh, per month. Uh, so a node with 100 gigabytes of SSD is to cost you about $10 per month. Uh, there's also cost associated with the uh, data copy uh, as well. So um, please do not overcreate nodes that you're not going to use. Also, please do not copy large amount of data uh, that is not very necessary. Uh, otherwise, uh, you're going to see a huge billing at the end of the month. From now on, I'm going to explain how to create an AWS instance and how to log in. For those of you who are familiar with this process, I may want to skip the video to the next part. And uh, starting from this slide, uh, I'm going to assume that you have never used AWS before. First, you want to sign up for AWS and create an AWS account. Uh, go into this link and you can follow the steps uh, they ask you to do. Now, um, depending on the institution you're in, it's possible that you're eligible for promotional credit on sign up. Um, you want to check with your IT administrator if you're able to obtain this. But keep in mind that some credits have limitation and cannot be used to access an F1 instance. After signing up, uh, let's create an instance. Under Services, uh, click on EC2. Next, you need to choose the region to launch the instance. Uh, you can choose the region closest to you. Um, you can do this in the upper right part of your screen. Then click on EC2 dashboard and click on launch instance. Uh, then you need to select your AMI. Search for FPGA developer AMI and click on AWS marketplace and select this. Uh, then select the instance type. For now, you can choose either m5.x large or m5.2x large. Uh, if you want to speed up the compilation process or virus complaints about lack of memory, uh, you may want to switch to a larger node uh, later. But uh, beware of the hourly rate of using these instances. For those of you launching an instance for the first time, uh, you'll be asked to create a new key pair. Uh, this is the uh, password you use for logging into AWS. Uh, make sure you keep it in a safe directory uh, after you download it. Uh, never share the key pair with anyone. Now, let me re repeat that again. Never share your key pair with anyone. Don't put it in a share folder. Um, don't put it in a directory that will be sent to the GitHub, okay? And uh, after creating a key pair for the first time, uh, you may want to reuse an existing one to launch another instance. 
um, then you'll be asked to review and launch. Uh, you may want to increase the EBS storage to like about 20 to 30 gigabytes because uh, 5 gigabytes is a little bit too small. But for now, uh, let's leave it at 5 gigabytes uh, since we can change it to a larger storage later. After you launch, go to the Instance tab and find the instance you have just launched. Uh, what we are looking for is the IP address of this instance. You can find it under the uh, public IP v4 address. In the Instance tab, you can do various tasks to manage your instances. The M5 instance you have just launched will become running state in about a minute. Uh, after you're done using the instance, uh, it's very important that you stop. Uh, your instance will be charged whether you're actively running anything on the server or simply waiting at the Linux console. Uh, to avoid payment, you need to make sure that you have stopped the instance. When you come back to use a stop instance, you can click on the start instance and your instance will have a new IP address that you can log in. Now, even after stepping an instance, keep in mind that you'll still pay for the storage you have attached to your instance. The cost is a lot less than using a compute node, but it will still cost something. So if you're certain that you no longer use certain instances, you may want to terminate the instance. Uh, but be careful since you can never revive an instance that has been terminated. Also make sure that your related hard disk volume has been deleted as well uh, when you terminate an instance. Let's SSH into AWS instance. If you're using Linux, uh, you can log in with the command ssh-i your key pair file name uh, sent to us at IP address uh, of the instance you just created. Uh, if you're using Ubuntu Linux, you need to change the ID to Ubuntu, but uh, as of 2021, uh, FPGA Developer AMI is on CentOS. And uh, if you get a complaint about an unprotected uh, key uh, private key file, uh, you can also type uh, change mode uh, 400 your key pair file name uh, to make the key pair file uh, file uh, yourself read only. If you're using Windows, uh, you can use any SSH software you're using, uh, but uh, if you have never done this before, uh, you can download a PuTTY. Uh, this is a freeware and uh, install the software. Uh, using the key pair is a little bit tricky on PuTTY. Um, you need to run a different program named PuTTY uh, Key Generator. After selecting RSA, uh, load the key pair uh, file you just downloaded from AWS, uh, the dot, uh, .pem file. Uh, then you can press the Save Private Key button, uh, then it will be saved to a uh, PPK file. Uh, next, come back to launch your PuTTY uh, in configuration. Uh, click Connection, uh, SSH, Authentication, and then browse for the PPK file uh, you just created with Keygen. Finally, come back to the Session tab and put uh, CentOS at the instance IP address on the host name. Also, make sure to save the setting uh, so that uh, you only need to change the IP address uh, the next time you log in. Then you are ready to log in. In the next video, we're going to uh, run the Hello World example on AWS. But uh, before moving on, uh, please request for increasing the uh, F1 instance limit. It's typically zero. Uh, when you first make your account, uh, you probably want to put 8 on the free CPU limit when you uh, request for an in increase. Now, 
not every AWS region has F1. The one I'm using is uh, North Virginia. Uh, after you uh, submit the request, AWS customer service will probably approve the request in a couple of days. Now, uh, let's summarize this lecture. In F1 instance, FPGA is connected to host CPU uh, via PCIe interface. You can create an FPGA image on any EC2 instance using FPGA developer AMI. Um, it doesn't need to be an F1 instance. It can be done on an M5 instance as well. Uh, you need to SSH into an AWS instance with a key pair and make sure you keep the key pair in a safe place. And uh, special attention is needed to stop or terminate uh, an unused instance to avoid of overbilling. In fact, uh, please don't forget to stop the instance you just used uh, when you're done with this, uh, today's class. And that's it for this part, and I'll see you in the next class.